reversion to Catholicism, signs from God, and a big announcement with Brian Kane here on Spirit Inspire, starting right now. Broadcasting from the Cathedral of the Assumption in Louisville, Kentucky, this is Spirit Inspire. And now, here is your host. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Spirit Inspire for another smashing episode. Uh, I am your host today, John Soule, with my co-hosts, Eric Huff. Hello. Isaac Fox. Hey there. And Brian Kane. Hello. And we are very excited to uh, uh, share a second part of Brian Kane's illustrious story. It's, uh, it's quite the gripping tale, especially when it involves uh, all of what we discussed last time with Star Wars and, and um, uh, Christmas Eve, which, uh -huh. you know, today we're releasing this episode on the Feast of St. Stephen. So right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I know, we're very excited about the future. And, and I figured uh, I'll kind of let Brian bring us back up to speed with the story and launch back into the rest of the details to kind of give us a sense um, of where we're heading. Awesome. Brian? Well, thank you, John. Thank you, gentlemen, for, uh, for listening once again to this, uh, this tale. Uh, part two. John and Gentlemen would, is just a great name. <laughs> we, should start a, we should start a band. John, John and, and the Gentlemen. gentlemen. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. All right, all right. You would, have, you would have to find Gentlemen, though, to go with you. So That's true. That's true. Uh, I guess that discounts you three. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway. also it also true. kind of makes it sound like John is not one of the Gentlemen. Like, <laughs> oh he's like God. this rap scallion who uh, like leads some Gentlemen. I see him as like a rocker <laughs> with a headband yeah. with the rest of the groups Everybody in a full piece, yeah, exactly. like three-piece suit. Exactly. <laughs> Very dapper. Uh, Ridiculous. All right. All right. Well, so to, to, to catch everybody up, if you didn't watch part one, uh, I, I grew up Catholic. I fell away from the church. I, I spent time as an atheist. And then um, it was really in the year uh, 2012, uh, the year that the Mayan calendar was going to end and there was going to be a, uh, this apocalypse, if you remember that. Yes. Uh, uh, that, that I really started to have sort of a, a spiritual awakening, if you will. Started to get the sense that the universe was trying to get my attention and that didn't fit my atheistic worldview. Uh, the universe uh, does not try to get people's attention in an atheistic worldview. And, uh, and so I, I was starting to kind of piece things together and feel like, the, like either I was crazy or God existed. Or and so I'm, well, that, that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those both. things are not that's mutually a, exclusive. That's, right. that's true. That's Brian true. is crazy and God exists. And God exists. Mom, and that's often, what's been born out. My mom has often called me a fool for Christ. Uh, so yes. that idea of being Saint a Paul. fool. Yes. It just, it, <laughs> you, you sound crazy to the whole world, right? But it's okay. You should. You should. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, uh, yes. So, so whether I'm crazy or not, still yet to be determined. <laughs> Uh, but, but as I was assessing back in 2012 and, and thinking about, okay, you know, like I, I was, and I don't mean like mildly crazy. I was like, am I genuinely crazy where I'm putting patterns together that aren't there? It's like, is, is this a beautiful mind situation <laughs> or is, That's what uh, just in my head yes, so yes. Like, or, or is this like, is this reality? And I, you know, I'm trying to think, uh, okay, well, I got, I got friends. I have like a, a stable corporate job. I'm doing comedy. I make people laugh. It seems like, you know, it, it, at least I'm checking most of the boxes of sanity. Do you even ask these questions if you're actually insane? Right. Um, so th this is, uh, this is what was happening in 2012. Well, 2012 kind of culminates uh, with a Christmas miracle. And I'll point people back to episode one. If you want to hear the details of that. We're past and, Christmas. You got to go back yeah, to episode so, one. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but where I left it, where I ended it was the week following Christmas 2012. I had this revelation that, uh, that, that I felt convicted that God existed. And all of this, like my, my conviction that God existed happened on Christmas morning. And so naturally I connected those two things and I said, okay, I think God is real and he is somehow connected to Christmas, which in my mind meant Christ is 
somehow connected to all this, at least the word Christ. Yeah. Um, now, at that time, you know, I was I was deep in atheist mythology and Richard Carrier and all that stuff. And uh, and so I questioned whether Jesus was even a real person or was he actually a historical figure? How much could we know about? I didn't know really any of that stuff other than sort of uh, YouTube surface level um, imbibing of Christopher Hitchens and, and Richard Dawkins and, and a little bit of Richard Carrier and stuff like that. Um, though had never read any books except The God Delusion. Um, so, <laughs> the, uh, so coming out of that, that Christmas, so, uh, I was set to fly back to Los Angeles and, uh, usually I was flying out of Columbus, which is where my godmother lives. And, uh, and so we, we went to, uh, her house the night before to stay the night and then fly out early the next morning. Um, I think, uh, I think my little sister was there and my mom and me. And uh, we had a, uh, a great conversation that night about, um, like that, that night before we went to bed, um, about like my godmother telling stories of angels and angels being around the bedside of her mother, like uh, her mother visibly saw angels before she passed away. And, um, and I, I believe the story was that my godmother had seen them too. And, um, and she asked me and my sister, you know, well, what do you, what do you guys think when you hear stories like that? And, and my sister was like, ah, I'm pretty skeptical about him. And I was like, I, I, I think that could happen. And, and I would not have said that, uh, you know, a couple years before. And as a Christmas gift, she gave me a collection of C.S. Lewis writings that night. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just a bunch of excerpts from poems and books and Chronicles of Narnia and all the stuff, letters. Um, and, uh, so I went to bed that night, and I think one of the last things I said on the episode one of this story was uh, was that um, that night I had a, a dream that the devil and and Jesus were fighting over my soul. Yeah, yeah and it was did. very intense, very real, and I woke up like in a cold sweat. Uh, so very intense. The next morning, uh, I went to the airport, and. Uh, I was at, I was in the Columbus airport and the flight was delayed. And so I went to get like a cheeseburger. Uh, well, you know, they said, oh, it's going to be an hour or whatever. So I went to get some lunch, came back to the terminal. Well, they, they had, uh, they had rescinded the delay and the flight had taken off without me oh. and I hadn't heard uh, the, uh, the, like the announcement. What? And so like, I was, I was just there like, well, what, what do I do now? And like, obviously you're like really mad about it. And, uh, but you had a full belly. I did have a full belly, but that wasn't enough to, <laughs> to CS Lewis book. my anger. Exactly. <laughs> oh. And, uh, so I'm trying to get back to LAX, which is the Los Angeles airport and, uh, going back and forth from desk to desk and, uh, customer service. Well, it ended up that, uh, and the whole time I'm like cursing, uh, God, like, well, the, the, the very week I start believing in you, like you would do this, like, how dare you God of the universe? Uh, this is the level of pride that I have to wrestle with every day. And, um, and so you're Brian uh, Kane. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 A, a weighty name to be sure. Right. Um, like, <laughs> uh, and, um, so, uh, <laughs> so, um, so it all like a, a couple hours later or, or maybe, you know, maybe in my mind it's a couple hours, but, but at least like an hour later, I was finally booked on another flight and it was actually to Burbank, which was closer to my house. It was going to arrive earlier than my original flight, and I had a $500 flight voucher in my pocket. So I was $500 richer. I landed earlier, closer to my house, and I felt very silly uh, for cursing God <laughs> moments before. Um, and so on that flight uh, home, I, uh, I read that entire book, and like every single uh writing in that book was in some way like a spear to the heart something i'd experienced that year before and wrestling with this or that um and uh and i landed uh i landed in the burbank airport closer to my house earlier than expected and in my phone i typed jesus is real uh because i didn't want to forget that i was i was afraid that i was gonna like like i was so convicted on that flight and it was so foreign and new uh, that, that landing, I was like, oh, like tomorrow I'm, I'm just going to go to sleep tonight. And like, 
I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to think this is all a dream and like it and it's not real. And, how, I'm, and how, I'm scared of that happening. How old were you at this time? I was, uh, this is 2012, so I was 25. Okay. 10 years. Yeah. What a journey. Yeah. Well, uh, 10 years, what do you mean? Away from the, oh, oh from, from now. now. It's been is 10 it? years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's incredible to reflect. I mean, 10 years of your life and you were a totally different person, Brian. Oh yeah, like that's to me one of the most remarkable aspects to 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 think about conversion. It's literally from one moment where you're this way, thinking this way, living this way, and now you're obviously it's gradual. There's gradual yeah. elements to this, but but when you can look back between where you were and where you are, that's one eighty. That's completely different direction that your life is heading now compared to then. No doubt about it. And that's a that's an incredible gift, a miracle. Yes, it, it's been miraculous, continues to be. Um, one of the reasons I got derailed there on the 10 year mark is like when I when I think about time, it's like when I when I went to confession is like when I start counting the years. So that's mm. the number that's in my head. So um, but it's really cool to think about because especially it being the Christmas season, it's almost 10 years to the day wow. uh, since that, uh, miracle. that Christmas miracle. So wow. that, that's pretty special. Um, <laughs> Wow. And yeah, just I would say something I'm kind of curious here about because um, I remember last time in, in the episode one, you were talking about the time you spent as an atheist and how you were a fairly evangelical atheist, yes. you know, mm -hmm. trying to right. trying to convert people away from belief online and obviously had a familiarity with Richard Dawkins and um, you know, Christopher Hitchens, maybe Sam Harris, all of those guys. So this experience that you had in which you begin to become convicted that God existed, that Jesus was real, you're reading C.S. Lewis, um, and so you have the initial conviction that, yes, this makes sense, God exists, Jesus is real. Um, probably that one book by C.S. Lewis didn't answer everything you had learned and heard from the Christopher Hitchens and Doctors sure. of the World. Did you spend some time after, after that um, Kind of still going through the intellectual journey of I need to get answers for the objections I had when I was an atheist or was it like hey I believe this makes sense I don't need to think about it anymore did you have to kind of still work through some of that for sure so that and, and that's what really was the the next two years like I you know I okay. said that I, I count from when I went to confession well it wasn't for another two years that that, that happened okay um, and and some of that uh, some of that intellectual conversion, I think, was already happening in 2012. Like, yeah. you know, as I moved back into agnosticism, as I felt like the universe was trying to get my attention, it was like, okay, let me let me go back and listen again okay. to William Lane Craig. I've right. listened to seven debates that he that he's done, or you know, whatever number, I, countless hours. I would watch him over and over. But like I, but never before had I been open to what he was saying. Like it, it was from a derisive posture. We almost always I, think our guy wins the debate. Exactly. Yes. yes. Exactly. You go in with a certain mentality, and it will change. It's like you know what I, you receive in that. I would argue most of those those debates probably you know Dr. Craig did well or won most of them. But again, we're liable to come in with you know if you're the fan of the other guy. No, my guy won. Well, and the less sophisticated a thinker you are, the more susceptible you are to rhetoric, too. Yeah, and and the more sophisticated fancy words. In a debate, yes, which comes from sophistry, actually. But the right. more sophisticated thinkers in the debates are often not as rhetorical because they're trying to really get across some important deep idea, and so the other guy may score the cheap points, which are going to land with ninety five percent of the audience even if they didn't actually win the substance of the debate. And that's kind of an unfortunate okay. position. Because the be. Christian also has to wrestle with charity. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, that's, like that's Christopher really Hitchens tough. doesn't have any um, any rules of engagement other okay. than like sort of a atheistic honor or something. Consider like the that. lovely title of his book about Mother Teresa. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but right. the the editor afterwards doesn't have to worry about charity. That's why they make William Lane Craig have the Next episode by Dr. Dre come on in the sunglasses a little day. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like now, um, as a Christian and as a Catholic, I'm actually harsher on um, the folks on my side of the yeah. aisle. Like, uh, whenever I'd watch those debates as an atheist, I'd be like, we got him, but fellas, let's pack it up. And now um, I watch the debates, and even if, uh, you know, they're substantial and uh, our side 
is doing a good job. I do find myself to be more of a critic. Like, well, I, I do agree with you, but your point was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but or not because of that. Yeah, You could have presented right. it better. Yeah, or, you're, yeah, you're actually a bad representative. I could do a better debate than you are doing. I don't know if I can bad pride. No, no. <laughs> I don't think I, I can make it up there on stage. I've seen but. some. Well, yeah, I, I, you, you can talk the talk. It's when you can walk it and actually do it. But, but still, there is that tendency, I agree, when you're watching someone debate and defend the Christian Catholic worldview. Sure. And they're doing a bad job of it. You're yeah. like, gosh! Now all the people watching who are against you are going to even be more against right. you, right. and it's your fault. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I get it, man. Yeah, it, it, I think that the level to to be fair to the atheists, uh, you know, and everybody, I think the level of dialogue on like the internet and on YouTube has like gone way up yes. since, uh, yep. like, you know, the the cosmic yes. skeptics of the world and yep. the, the real atheology yeah. guys, like. You know that that it, there is earnest charity uh, uh, in this um, in this dialogue now, which is really cool, and, yeah, and it nice. actually leads to like you can actually connect to the the, the arguments and the points that different yeah. people are making and say, yeah, that is. A and really you're good seeing point. high profile people on both sides actually exercising that charity, and not only just debating, but sitting down for conversations like Cosmic Skeptic and Trent Horn. You know, right. it's just so cool to see them, and they're I believe they have aired it on both their podcasts right. and they sit there and they chat about where they agree and disagree about religion and yeah, yeah that's and they're both very thoughtful intelligent people so yeah. that's that has been a real improvement i think yeah, generally as a person i really like cosmic skeptic yeah one. that's yeah. actually one of the ones where i was thinking of now i go oh i really oh i really want to watch his video because i want to see what he has to say right but it's he's going to definitely not be of my opinion on, right. on most things i yeah. really like Every, joe schmidt yeah. though he's yeah. more agnostic not atheist joe but schmidt. He's yeah. a majesty, majesty of, of reason. reason. He's an extremely brilliant, Don't say um, that at scary, the same time. scary smart guy. Um, yeah, but he's more agnostic than actually atheist. But I find that he uh, he's really good at attempting to understand the other side, and and does so very well. In fact, he's appeared, um, I think, on Cameron uh, Matusi's mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. In which he, with uh, Cameron, looks at all like the bad atheist arguments, and he's, didn't he do a, and a was it Joe or was it, um, I know I've derailed completely, or was it Cosmic so, Skeptic, this is my where world. they they like actually switched switch sides, and he debated from the Christian side, and did like really really well. I don't because he that'd knew be kind of cool. Actually, you know the talking points. He actually understood the theistic arguments. He wasn't yeah. making caricatures of them. Like he right. gets it. But Brian, back to you. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, this, I mean, this is like I said. This this is uh, this is where I lived for a long time. So so it makes sense. So uh, basically, the next beat of the story is that uh, you know. So okay. So I have this conviction that that Jesus is real. It didn't go away that night. Uh, like I I woke up the next morning still thinking that that Jesus was real. And um, did you have and you would phone? be surprised how a little C.S. Lewis book can actually cut to the chase yes. more than seventeen hours of a YouTube video or something. <laughs> like if it's actually talking about the question at hand. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I really spent the next two years um, uh, like okay I think Christ is real I think he's connected to the universe. I've heard people say he wasn't even a historical person. I've heard he said people say that um, that he was just you know just a teacher. He didn't do miracles. So like it was really just starting to dive into uh, Christianity, and uh, and so I started also watching a lot of debates between Catholics and Protestants, and that was where my Catholic answers uh, sort of um, uh, I, well I just spent a lot of time in sort of the Catholic Answers world watching really old debates with like, uh, you know, Jerry Mattatix and uh, is it yeah. Carl Keating? Carl Keating, Keating. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy and, uh, Aiken. And then t Trent Horn, Jimmy Aiken still. still yeah. The way you strong. pronounce that, I play <laughs> my brain. Um, That's right. Jim right, yeah. Aiken. Jimmy Aiken. <laughs> I heard it as like, okay. as like, uh, it was split differently. Jimmy yes. Aiken. Yeah. Uh, Jim Aiken. See, Jim See, Aiken. I remember, I remember Catholic <laughs> Answers in those early days because, you know, Staples. I was literally looking Tim up Catholic Staples. Answers yeah. on, in 06, 07, 08 when I was right. asking my questions. Right. I didn't fall into the atheist camp or anything like that I mean, by God's grace alone, but but there were still these intense doubts in my life that led me to Catholic.com. And that's 
the yeah. only place I could find on the internet that actually gave you something without opening the catechism and reading it yourself, which was not necessarily something I was ready to do at 15 years old. How but cool they remember, got Catholic.com, though. That was a I great know. Domain. That yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you remember, too, from when we did my conversion story, Carl Keating's book, uh, Catholicism and Fundamentalism, was one of the, the really key yeah. moments for me in my, in my That's journey. right. That's yeah. right. He's a genius. Um, stuff. So I, uh, I, you know, I just felt like every time I watched a debate, the Catholic won. And, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of, like, James White debating Catholics and, and uh, not to call him out and say that he lost every debate I watched. But <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I just But if you're like, watching this, James <laughs> White, <laughs> you <laughs> lost. I'll be on the radio show. I'd be honored to be on the Alpha and Omega getting, uh, getting roasted. Yeah. There are um, some legendary debates with James White. Though, and he's years. great, and I love him. And he's and, a brilliant uh, debater. Is he a yeah. Calvinist? Is yeah. He, okay, yeah, I know but like, about. if you want to see like someone do a great job defending Christianity against Islam, his debates against Muslims yeah. are awesome. Um, he's a brilliant debater. I think yeah. he's hard to beat because of how good he is at debating. Yeah. But there, some of those those old debates, like on sola scriptura and stuff, he flat out lost. You know, and I agree. it's mm -hmm. those uh, are some powerful performances by the the Catholic apologists. Do you know anything about his sister, by the way? Yes, a little bit. But if she's he's watching this, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, God is good. Yeah. <laughs> Inverted. Uh, if he, his his debate on salvation, can you lose your salvation with Trent Horn? I think this this is after my conversion, but that's one of the most powerful um, uh, Catholic wins yeah. in in the James White Compendium. Yeah. Um, but uh, of anyway, losses so, is so all, yeah. so, no, no, of debates. <laughs> so Brian, all of this researching and all listening, all the losses in the history of losses, <laughs> all the researching and reading and listening that you're doing over these yes. two years is leading you to confession or to okay. So it's so church. yeah. So I mean, I'm doing where, research on a lot you? of levels. Yeah. So um, so pretty early on, like you know, I'm watching Protestant Catholic debates. I'm I'm starting to think, okay, um, like it seems like the Catholics are winning these debates. Um, I'm also fighting against, uh, I had mentioned in the first episode, Richard, one of Richard Dawkins, uh, strong points, which is, um, you know, he uses this rhetoric tool of rhetoric of saying like, um, well, if you, you know, if you're born in India, you'll be Hindu. If you're born in America, you'll be Christian. Yeah. If you'll, if you're, so I had this bias against Catholicism, I think, because I was born into it. And so that started to break down too. Like, well, what, you know. There's no whether I was born into it or not doesn't doesn't play a role on the on the truth claim, uh, like it's it's either true or, or it's not. Sure. And um, so so that started to to break down too. And maybe in the next segment I'll tell you about how God continued to work and started uh, sort of con like he he kept uh, like the universe kept talking to me as well. So I, I can I can talk about some of those things. That sounds that. great. That sounds great. So I guess in that moment, we'll take a break for uh, our first segment and we'll be back in a short while after this message. Family Renewal Project is our local Theology of the Body apostolate in service to the Archdiocese of Louisville. They are having a crash course on Theology of the Body on February 3rd and 4th at St. Margaret Mary Catholic Church. This is an incredible opportunity to begin exploring God's master plan for each one of us. Theology of the Body is indeed the answer that we have so desperately needed to this current culture of chaos and confusion. To learn more or to register, go to bit.ly slash tlb1 cc 0223. Or to see the calendar, go to familyrenewalproject.com slash events. All right, everybody, welcome back to Spirit and Spire. I'm your host today, John Soule. We've been talking to our illustrious co host, Brian Kane, about his story. And uh, he's kind of bringing us up to speed from that first episode we recorded early on. This is part two to kind of share more details of his conversion uh, from atheism into the, uh, back, really back into the heart of the church. So, Brian, we'll just kind of let you uh, continue the story where you left off. Awesome. So, uh, so that I told you that, like, I think God kept doing signs and wonders uh, for me, which um, a lot of times when I tell this story, I like to remind people because uh, especially like people who 
uh, have been Christian their whole life and who have not strayed, uh, they're like, um, well, why hasn't God done, you know, really blatant signs in my life? And, or, you know, why, uh, I had a friend say that to me one time, like God's never given me a sign. And I was like, well, you, you've never left the church, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, so I, I, you know, like the reason St. Paul gets knocked off his horse and hears Jesus's voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Is because he's murdering Christians. <laughs> like <laughs> right. uh, if he was in the fold, Jesus would not have done that. I call um, this phenomenon senvi because it's almost like they're, they're <laughs> envious of your sinful life. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I, wish I killed people <laughs> and they'd be knocked off my high horse. I wish I needed conversion. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I'm so mad. Yeah, but but, but it is, it, I've, I've encountered the same phenomena um, so yeah, I, Gosh. I understand fully. I love powerful. that word and that, that, that helps explain it. But I, but I always like, you know, try to tell people, well, let, let my signs be your signs. If you need some signs, like, <laughs> if you need signs, if you need them, ask for them. God will provide. But remember that blessed are those who have seen and, or who have not seen and believe. Yeah. Um, like if you have enough faith to keep going, just keep going. Correct. Uh, but, um, but anyway, so uh, so the the next one for me as I'm studying the church and whatnot was uh, the the second uh, anniversary dating my wife, which um, was in uh, April of 2013, and um, so I'm I'm starting to look into the church at this point, and our tradition was that we would go up to the wisdom tree on top of the Hollywood Hill. So if you know uh, the Hollywood sign, yeah. there's one single solitary tree that has survived all the fires that they call the, the tree of wisdom. And it's a nice like half hour, pretty steep, uh, strenuous hike. And so our tradition, this was the second one of, of a, the set, the tradition, uh, we went and hiked up and had a picnic lunch up there uh, down, down the road. It's where I proposed and whatnot. Um, oh, wow. but so were you actually married at this point? I was not married no. at this point. This is the second anniversary dating. So we Dang. dated, okay. I, I proposed on our fourth dating anniversary. So you okay. still had two years ago from that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, April 2013. Actually, yeah. Now I'm thinking this was in 2012. Did I tell this story already? No. Okay. All right. Good. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like it, <laughs> it's 10 years ago, so it's starting to, to sure? blur a little bit. It's recorded in other venues, thankfully. Good. Uh, but anyway, so so we hiked up there, and um, we took pictures and uh, on a tripod. Uh, that's like jumping, doing jumping shots in front of the wisdom tree, and like the sun's behind us. So these beautiful pictures. And uh, so a month or two later, I was going through my Facebook album of, of this uh, anniversary of dating. And, um, and I, I'm clicking through and I like, I paused and I stopped and I went back. And I was like, man, it, it really looks like there's, a, there's an eye in the tree in this photo. <laughs> and, um, and it was, you know, kind of how you would see a shape in the clouds, like just with the with the light and the shadows in the tree, yeah. like there, you know, maybe we can link, I have a picture of it, we can link it in the description. But I mean, yeah. I, I think it's, you know, and, and most people I've shown it to think it's a pretty detailed eye uh, in the shadows of this tree. And the way the light is hitting from the sun, it looks like two sides of a triangle. And so it looks like there's a triangle around the eye. And, uh, oh. and so I always joke. So I, uh, I was thinking what everybody out there is thinking. Illuminati. Right. And, the Illuminati. <laughs> and, uh, oh my gosh. and so like this, this took me into a, <laughs> an internet wormhole pre, uh, pre QAnon. Yeah, um, I was going to uh, say. Gosh. Uh, you know, uh, but anyway, what. Adrenophine. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, what, what I actually, um. I'm glad you mispronounced that. Don't say it actually, like, then they'll get us. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, <laughs> no, what, what, what I, in my research, what I discovered is, oh, that's a Catholic symbol. That's in, you know, yeah. Christian iconography yeah. f way before it was in Freemason iconography or Illuminati iconography. Yeah. Um, you or know, on the, national the, treasure. Yeah, and, well, right. Dollar so, bills, right. So, you know, the triangle being the Trinity and the, the eye being the all-seeing eye of God. And, uh, and on this one random weird website I found that I never found again, it connected this, uh, <laughs> this symbol with uh, Melchizedek and, and the priesthood of Melchizedek. Hmm. And so I'll, all of a sudden, you know, so I'm, I'm 
taking it as like, okay, Catholic Church is scoring some points here on the on the the universe is talking, talking to me that level, <laughs> um, and uh, and then but it, but now there's like this priesthood idea, and I'm like. Uh, Okay, maybe God wants me to be uh, the first married Catholic priest. This is as much as I know about the Catholic Church oh, at sure, that time. Right. So there's no, there's no married Catholic priests in my mind. Uh, I didn't know Father Jonathan Erdman yet, um, and uh, so, uh, so I did what any um, rational person would do, and and not crazy person would do, and I uh, took that picture and I wrote a letter to the Pope. And I, <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> this is the this is the uh, like the game plan of someone this who is, really doesn't have any concepts. This is of, Pope Francis, right after he became this, Pope, <laughs> or right? Yeah. So, so and so actually, okay. that was something that I wanted to mention too, because he was elected right in this exact time frame. Yeah. And uh, and so you know, I'm getting all these signs from the universe, and I was driving one day, and they said, oh, white smoke has gone up at the Vatican, and uh, the Pope has chosen the name Francis, and all my hair stood up, because that's my confirmation name. Uh, so that was wow. like, that was another one of these sort of signs and wonders, <laughs> think, uh, just personally. How many letters do you think the Vatican get <laughs> about the all-seeing eye, <laughs> right, exactly. like, probably a lot. Here's another one for the all-seeing eye pile, boss. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I'm just kind of thinking, like, like a, <laughs> you wrote a letter to the Pope. I'm just kind of thinking right now that, like, if this God were worse. to write a song to you, it would have something about you probably think all these signs are about you. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now, of course. Oh, this must mean I'm to be the first buried priest. Right. I think I'm just going to tell the Pope about that. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. So I told you, yeah, my, my last name is Cain. So I've got some pride I'm wrestling with. So, well, I'm glad you uh, are uh, able to it, deal with that. <laughs> oh, my exactly. gosh. Exactly. Uh, that's only the fourth <sighs> time you've made that pun after me. But only once name. on air, I believe. No, no, no. There's, uh, there's, probably more than once. There was before. one. I think it was last week you did one. Uh, <laughs> there's been two the this record, episode. For the record, I was not here last week. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I immediately had that thought. It was two weeks ago. You're right, right, right. right. Um, anyway. Anyway. So, uh, uh, so, you know, so I'm thinking about this. And, um, and it was like, okay, well... Um, Oh, and there, the, like, I think around this time, there was uh, um, one day, like, I just felt this strong uh, conviction. Uh, there was a Nissan Quest ahead of me, and, and I had this strong convic conviction of, like, follow that car. Uh, like, this is part of the journey, and it drove past the local Catholic church, and I was like, that's where it was leading me to. And I pulled in, and and as all this is happening, the way... God's way freaking out. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't that far. It, was, it wasn't that many turns. It was, it was, not far. It was just straight down the road. It, it, I didn't I didn't uh, go in his driveway. Why did you follow this car? I just felt like the... the mm -hmm. Like, so, like I said, the universe is, like, talking to me. It's not audible words. Okay, like, so it wasn't a bumper sticker. I'm having sticker this sense, or... like... He's following him. The well, universe it said, it said is quest on the... Okay, it said okay. quest. That's, that's the word okay. that stood out. That's what I missed. And, like, I was okay. like, okay, uh, you know, so... <laughs> it makes more sense. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. like, you follow... Uh, we're veering into beautiful mind territory, I know. Anyway, yes. so I landed at the church. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that, at this point, the weight of my sin is also hitting me. If mm. God is real... Yeah. If everything that has been concealed will be revealed, if everything that is in darkness is in light, is going to be in light, well, that that weighs on a man, and um, <laughs> and so <laughs> so yeah. uh, so I, I ended up at this church and I went in and um, and I just like started like just went into a pew and I just like spent like an hour on my knees praying our fathers like just like starting to feel like. Oh no! Like that. Like I, I'm going to have to confront all the th the bad things I've done, and just yeah. being totally overwhelmed by it, and not knowing anything to do other than the Our Father, which is like you know one of the only prayers I knew at that point. Um, and uh, and and you know, feeling some catharsis that day, um, but continuing to to wrestle. And um, so then. So that so uh, you know I know the timeline's a little mushy here and it is in my mind too but uh, but eventually um, I was like okay I'm pretty sure like I'm I'm this eye has something to do with something and uh, so I decided to go to the local Catholic parish this is a few months later and talk to a priest 
well, they were renovating the church and there was a big construction fence around the church building. And in my mind, I was like, well, the church is closed. Uh, so like, I was like, you know, there's no one there anymore. Um, like, again, no concept of a parish staff or that, like, they're probably having mass in the social center or whatever. Right. Um, right. So, or there's a door that's unlocked that you can right. still access. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. that's so relatable. <laughs> so I was like, well, the church is closed. I, I have on the books a trip to visit my sister in Sweden. Um, and my friend and I have talked about going back to Prague where we lived in college. Um, and, and so like this all kind of happened at the same time where he was like, we were talking, maybe we could like visit one other country, um, while we're in the Czech Republic because it's so close to everything. And so I said, well, we're both Catholic. Why don't we go to Rome? And I thought, that's where I can get some answers. So I'll, <laughs> I'll go to the Vatican uh, to figure out about this picture. Did Since you get the, my letter? Since <laughs> the Pope never responded, right? right? Yeah, the Pope didn't respond, and the local church was closed. So you've got to go <laughs> straight to That him. was the only other Catholic thing I could think of. The <laughs> universe <laughs> was silent. <laughs> oh, my. All right. And so we did. So, uh, so my friend was like, yeah, that sounds great. So we went to Czech Republic, um, had a great, uh, weekend in Rome. He flew out Saturday night, Sunday morning. I went to the Vatican. I was one of the only people in there. Uh, they were saying masses at every altar. They still did that then. And, um, and I just like kind of wandered around, uh, looking, I think this is now, uh, early 2014. Uh, yes, it was, it was early 2014. I think it was like February or March of 2014. Cause we're now we're getting close to conversion. And, um, and so I was like wandering around, like listening for an English speaker. And sure enough, one of the masses was two priests and speaking English. And so I just stood around awkwardly until they finished mass. And then, um, and then like, they were going to go back to the sacristy and I intercepted them and I was like, excuse me, uh, fathers, um, you know, I, I had a question I wanted to ask someone. Um, I was speaking to one guy, the other guy kind of kept walking. Um, I was like, you know, do you have, would you have a minute just to talk? And he said, well, I don't have any time, but this guy does. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so he said, this is Father Dave. And, um, and Father Dave said, let me go put my stuff away and I'll come back out and we can talk. So uh, Father Dave Zimmer from South Dakota comes back out and uh and says what's going on and i said well i got this picture and i don't know if i'm supposed to be a priest and like you know like all this stuff <laughs> and uh, this guy was like okay uh, <laughs> and your eye was twitching the entire time this was the nicest man um and uh and he said well uh you know from what i know the 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 eye often appears as a call to conversion like, I think God is probably just calling you back to the Catholic Church. And this is kind of where I had come to in my own discernment. I had thought about priesthood, and I thought, well, that doesn't really make sense. I'm engaged. I was engaged. No, I wasn't engaged. I was I was just, I'd been in a relationship with for four years with Lisa, and seemed like I was heading toward marriage, and that was that was the path. And, uh, and I was like, okay, that's kind of what I've been thinking, too. And he was like, you know, basically just, you know, go to confession and, be Catholic again. And I was like, okay. And so I walked over to the confessionals and the English speaking confessional. I went in and uh, I was this really gruff old priest who I could, you know, barely see through the screen. And I'm bumbling my way through it. I haven't been in the confessional in 10 years and go through like a, a lifetime of sin or, you know, basically. And, uh, and he goes, uh, well, are you still living? with your girlfriend? I said, yes. He said, well, don't you know you can't receive absolution in a state of sin? And I said, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> and, wow. uh, and he was like, and he literally didn't say another thing. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> and I just like stumbled out of the confessional. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and so thank then, God for good priests though. Yeah. Hey, amen. Uh, no, actually I think that guy said exactly what I needed to hear in yeah. that moment. Um, like, you know, I kind of, I kind of say it lightly, but, uh, that's what, I mean, that's what but I, like that's what I was all there was to say. Like he, he like th that was, that was, that was all I needed to hear in that moment. Yeah. I didn't, 
Did he just sit there? Was he still in there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he no, he was. Yeah, he's like, don't you don't you know you can't receive absolution in the state of sin? Yeah, if you were still living with your girlfriend, that's yeah. gonna definitely and intending, pull you back. And intending to continue. Yeah, and that's like, really what it is, right? Intending to continue. Yeah. My goodness. So uh Wow. So I was like, No, I didn't know that and and left. And I don't know if he was gonna say more and I just like, you know, the the timing of it's hazy, like I don't know if I just like bolted out of there like because I was like, like, a movie, like, oh, or, like maybe he was like, but I was gonna tell you what to do next. Or you know, I, I don't know. Um <laughs> but uh the, the silence was long enough that I was convinced he wasn't gonna say anything else and I left. And so then I'm like, you know, starting to Google on the Catholic Answers forums, like, yeah. okay, what is a state of sin? Like, you know, what's this all about? Um, and I'm just like stumbling around Rome and again, I'm cursing God. Like the day that I uh, decide to join the church, you do this to me, me, Brian Kane. The, 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 the prodigal and, son. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and uh, just like just devolved into sinfulness and lamenting and despair that day. And then like, but also was Googling Catholic answers and like going in and out of churches and praying randomly. Like I'm just literally wandering around Rome, like totally lost spiritually and physically. Um, finally get back to the, the moldy Airbnb, like literally the worst Airbnb I've ever stayed in. And, um, and, uh, and, I think, I don't know if it was that night or the next morning. I was like, okay, I got to talk to Lisa and like, I still want to be Catholic. And um, so I went home and, um, and uh, I was also discerning at this time whether to propose to her. And I was pretty convicted on that trip, which is a whole nother story that I was going to propose. And, uh, and so I got home and I told her, Hey, you know, I think we're going to have to abstain. I might have to move out. I don't know. You know, we were living together. Um, you know, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I want to be Catholic. And, um, and so, uh, was and, Lisa Catholic? No, Lisa no, she was, was uh, okay. pagan. And she was vaguely Christian. So she had had her own conversion, uh, experience in high school, sort of just on a spiritual level. Yeah. Um, and then kind of gone to a couple of churches with, with like boyfriends and things, but had never sort of made a Christian identity her own outside of those small experiences. Um, and, uh, so, so she was, you know, obviously taken aback and upset. What does this mean? Um, yeah, I was going to say, how's she going to react? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, with, with tears and wondering if it, this is a personal thing, you know, like, is it a personal uh, critique of her? That sort of thing. Um, and uh, Or was it a breakup? I mean, you can yeah, mis misinterpret right. a lot of things. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, so that week I got back and... Um, I called the local Catholic church. Hey, I need to go to confession. Um, okay, you can meet with Father Chan uh, on Friday. So I went and met with Father Chan. The church was open again. The uh, or, I think Actually, no. I think, the, I think the construction fence was still open. But then it was like, oh, there's a whole other set of buildings here. Like, I guess I could have just gone and talked to this guy <laughs> right off the bat instead of going to Rome. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so, and you ended up there anyway. Yeah. So I yeah. sat there. Talking. That's the usual response. Church on the streets closed. I might as well go to Rome. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, so I, I tell Father Chan the whole story. He's a young priest. He's like maybe a year or two into his ministry. He's basically my age, maybe a year older than me. And um, and he he tells me in retrospect, like I was like, wow, this guy is like really crazy. And he's like. Uh, well, you don't need to um, confess any of the sins you already confessed to me. Um, you know, you just confess anything since then. And since you've stopped, uh, since you're abstaining with your girlfriend now, um, I can absolve you. And, uh, and I said, okay. And he absolved me on my sins. And I felt a literal physical weight lift off my body. And, uh, and <laughs> I felt uh, like just completely, well, maybe not completely at peace, but a piece I had not felt in a very long time. And uh, so from there, I start, I continued to talk to Father Chan. I started uh, going to Mass, but I was still living that same life of uh, drugs and alcohol. And um, and then... Did you have long uh, hair? Yes. So yeah, you had long hair when you approached these priests in Rome... And all so you definitely looked. It was rock star Brian, right? Rock star Brian. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, Sorry. So, no, you're good. And so, uh, 
So Father Chan did seem, though, like, from an outsider perspective, seemed like he was pretty in cahoots with the guy in Rome, with the he, priest in the confessional there. He was he he was also exactly what I needed. He was he was great. Like he he would he listened. He was able to weigh in on things I'd been thinking about. He like I spent a, a probably a good hour with him before confession, okay. and then he was like, "Yeah, well, here's you know." And, and I'd been doing research on Catholic.com too, so I had a good sense of what was next. I That's didn't awesome. know the part about not needing to confess all those other sins again. Um, and, uh, so that was a relief, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, um, so again, like sort of in this universal sense or, um, like, you know, so, so God was still working on me in this, in this kind of intuitive sense, which is now how I would sort of describe some of the ways that the Holy Spirit works in my life. Um, I had this intuition that I need to pray the rosary. And so I started praying the rosary every day. And that was the next layer of conviction of sin. And not only like all that is in darkness will be brought to light, but all that is in darkness, you need to bring to light. And yeah. you need to have a hard conversation with Lisa about like who you really are, not who, uh, who you've been presenting, not the mask you've been presenting, but like you need to tell her. And so, like, I would pray the rosary in the morning, and um, and I started to have this sense that Mary was, like, very present to me and saying, like, you, you need to tell her it's going to be okay. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. You just tell her, I'll take care of it. Um, and I would get the courage to tell her, and then by the time we got back from work that night, I would have I, I would have lost the courage. And, and then the next morning, I would pray the rosary, and, and I would get the courage again, and then at night, I would lose it. So that was weeks. And then finally, like, this like started to bubble out of me and I finally like started to tell Lisa about my life. And, um, and that was a very, very hard time. And, um, and I asked her to stay with me. We were engaged at the time. Um, and, uh, and I, I laid out the changes I was going to make in my life. This was also the time where I, I, like I said, conviction of sin hit me at a different level. And I finally had the grace to like actually stop doing it. Well, to want to stop doing those yeah. things and to stop doing those things. And, um, and so, you know, I said, this is the man that I aspire to be. This is what I'm going to stop doing. You know, I'd like you to stay with me. I'll, I'll be the, the best husband. Um, you know, I think I said that, uh, that you could possibly have. What I should have said was the best husband I can be, um, but uh, right. but that, you know again it, yeah. you you hear my uh, my personality and my my vices, um, but um, but she took probably a month of like thinking about it, talking. She went and talked to Father Chan. She developed a sort of spiritual directy relationship with him, and she eventually said, hey, I'll, "You know, I'll stay with you. I forgive you," um, and that that uh changed everything and then all of a sudden we were um you know at peace uh on, on some level we, there was still work to be done and healing to be done and i you know i would say like i well i used to say that forgiveness is a um is not just a one-time thing like you don't don't just say i forgive you and then yeah. like every time that hurt comes back like you have to make a choice to forgive again uh I've heard some nuance in that now from different leaders I, I admire who say maybe it's not a, a choice to forgive again, but it's it's still a choice to like ha go deeper into the forgiveness and and find healing and peace and and still let go and still still heal. So, however you describe it, Lisa doesn't have just work to do in that one moment where I confess right. these things, but for the rest of her life to uh, to you know deal with memories and deal with pain and deal with wins and um and so mm. that that choice of hers um is you know what we built our marriage on so we abstained for a year and a half i i ended up living in in the apartment through talking to father chan um we we decided it would be a hardship in la to have two separate apartments um we didn't have the money to do that um but i slept on an air mattress on the floor for a year and a half and um and we abstained and um, and, uh, so we got married, uh, in summer 2015 in August and, uh, it ended up being, I picked 22. You remember I told you the, the universal 22s, um, 
well, we that had been so powerful to us that we uh, decided to pick a 22. There were two that year uh, that were eligible, August 22nd and November 22nd. We picked the summer, and that happened to be the Feast of the Coronation. Uh, <laughs> and so we ended up on this High Marian Feast Day wow. uh, through the intercession of Mary. And, um, and so I've, you know, done my best to spread um, devotion to Mary and the rosary ever since. And um, so, so God saved me. And that's, that's, uh, you know, the story continues obviously, and, and he is saving me and he will save me. But, uh, did you ever have the gift of tears during this process? I, I, I was praying for it and, and, uh, I think I've said this on the podcast before. It's still, it's still for the most part evades me. There, there have been some moments like right now, I'm, you know, I was choked up, uh, but like, it's very rare for like tears to fall, I think maybe once, uh, in a state of, uh, just having to, so confessing the dark things to Lisa took place over that year and a half. Like there's only so much you can say at any given time. And so, uh, (laughs) I would say like, Lisa, we need to talk. And she'd be like, oh, no, what is it now? Like, it got to the point where there's it was like, more. There was, yeah, like, it was just like this, this, uh, oh, no. And the last one of those was actually uh, the night before our wedding. Lisa, we need to talk. There's one more thing you need to know. And, uh, and that was, I think, the last one. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, so ever since, you know, we've been building on that trust and, and, uh, and now four kids lives are being built on that trust and in that relationship and there's so much healing that you can and hope that you give to others through this story brian that i know that you've already touched many lives and i know that you're going to continue touching people's lives through this story and uh, i'm excited to hear more um but i guess with that would you like to take a pause and we'll pick yeah. back up with our next segment uh, here on Spirit Inspire. We'll be back shortly after this. Hey everyone, another sponsor for today's episode is the Cathedral of the Assumption in the heart of downtown Louisville, Kentucky. It is the spiritual center of parish and family life and is a historic treasure for the Catholic Church in America. Take a tour or consider visiting for Mass. Check them out at cathedraloftheassumption.org. Welcome back, everyone, to Spirit and Spire. We've been talking to Brian Kane about his powerful testimony and witness, uh, witness to conversion, to resurrection, and to renewal. And I think it's uh, been an incredible privilege to uh, hear that story, but also to uh, just receive the gift of Brian Kane with us so much uh, for these. Uh, many episodes this first season, and uh, it's going to be hard to uh, say goodbye to Brian. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, but, what? Uh, <laughs> but he has made a, a powerful discernment, and... Uh, Was that a threat? <laughs> it might have been. Yeah, the answer's on pins and needles. You guys are helping me not uh, get too cho- choked okay, up, because it's meaningful. You know, it's... Uh, these are... These are sp- sacred moments that we're sharing together, Brian, and and uh, I guess I'll let you kind of share some of the details of your discernment and, and what are the next steps for Brian Kane, you know, because you shared a lot of your testimony to conversion, um, but in this segment, maybe just kind of give that sense of where you're headed and what God has done in your life. Okay. Um, well, the, the news is that uh, yep. the, the, the reason we're saying goodbye is that, that I've, uh, discerned that God was calling me to resign my, uh, my co-hostiness, uh, on Spirit and Spire. Yes, he's leaving Spirit and Spire, folks. It's very sad, <laughs> but it's okay. It is. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, um, I'm discerning, uh, a call to the diaconate to be a deacon. Uh, my wife and I are discerning together, uh, that call, uh, this, this year is a, is a year of, of, um, discernment and application and there's committees and, and then, uh, if you're accepted, it's a five-year formation process. Um, and so there's tons of, 
um, unknowns. Uh, but um, one of the things that that uh, that this has made me do, it you know, well, it, it's kind of a fun story. I I guess I could tell it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in uh, in the in the providence realm and all that uh just kind of say that uh that I'm still knuckleheaded and sinful that that God still uses signs uh to to lead me and guide me although I'm trying to take the saint john of the cross approach and nothing at uh, all right, <laughs> and right. uh and and leave them behind um but uh but I was uh over two years, kind of just thinking about it, it's something that came up really early on. Talking to Father Chan, I asked him about being a deacon. I don't remember why I thought about it, but I was like, you know, what what's involved with being a deacon? And he was like, well, that's a secondary vocation after marriage. Um, you really want to make sure you're fulfilling your primary vocation first. And uh, so that's really not something you should think about right now. And I was like, okay. And so I really didn't think about it. And then um, a couple years ago, um, after Mass, Father Erdman said something at the end of Mass at Margaret Mary, like, um, all you out there, you know, uh, you should consider a vocation. Uh, if you're already married, men, you should consider a vocation of the diaconate. And we, as we were walking out of church, Lisa said, uh, I felt like he was talking to you when he said that. And I was like, I kind of felt that way, too. <laughs> wow. and, uh, and so that was a couple years ago. And so there, there were little things like that here and there. Um, the, the last one that happened... Um, uh, as the new year was approaching uh, 21 to 22, we went to the cathedral, and we, I think we were talking about it on the way to the cathedral, and then what, one of the prayers of the faithful was specifically for deacons, which is pretty rare. Um, it might have been the Feast of Stephen. I, I don't know, which is... Uh, I don't I don't know if I've ever heard the... Like, I've heard the deacons give the petitions, right, right. but I've never heard them no, yeah. self-referentially <laughs> say... For deacon, <laughs> right? It was Father Lineback. It was like I don't know if it was vocations in general, but specifically deacons was mentioned. And <laughs> so Lisa and I again wow. just felt like it was sort of this this sign. Um, and I and so I was starting to take it more seriously. We went to the Encounter Conference between Christmas and New Year's this past year, and had an apartment with uh, Carl Dolson. And I was telling him about some of this, and uh, and he goes, I was literally just talking to the head of the diaconate yesterday, and he was saying that there's all these younger deacons these days, and I was like, okay, and um, hmm. and uh, and so, like, I started sort of coming out of that conference, you know, it's a powerful spiritual experience, and you're trying to process what God wants, and there, there were other moments, too. Um, uh, one of the guys told uh stories about three charismatic saints and um, and the different gifts they had. One was St. Catherine of Siena. My daughter, who was in the womb, was named Catherine after St. Catherine of Siena. And uh, and that uh, that charism was uh, deliverance. Uh, and um, and that's something that I've connected with. And so, and, and deacons on my mind. And so he had us all stand up if we felt maybe we had a calling like St. Catherine of Siena toward uh, healing and deliverance and this sort of thing. And um, and so I stood up and they prayed for us and, uh, thinking more about it. Um, so I kind of got to the point in my discernment where I was like, okay, Lord, I believe you are calling me to the diaconate at some point. I leave the timing to you. I'm done with this for now. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my primary vocation and you tell me the timing. And, uh, and so the, the next week, uh, this was now in March. Uh, I had a visit with uh, uh, Pastor Larry Coleman in the West End at, uh, at his church uh, to talk about holy angels. And uh, so this is a black man in the West End, a Protestant, and we're sitting talking together. And um, and he and he at the end of the meeting, it was a great meeting, our first time really having a conversation. He goes, "Well, let's pray," and he starts praying uh, for our family and and for Kit, who was born uh, Catherine. Uh, we call her Kit. She was born like two weeks later, but he's praying for her and and saying all these saying all these things that were really specific and that people had been praying over Lisa's like pregnant belly before that. So like I was already like feel like the Holy Spirit's working here. And then he concludes the prayer and he goes, uh, by the way, are you a deacon? <laughs> and I said, uh, well, no, uh, it's something I've thought about. Uh, and I told him about holy orders, which, you know, and, and he goes, well, I felt like I was supposed to mention it because I felt like when I was praying that the Holy Spirit kept saying deacon, 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 deacon. And wow. that just so happened to be the morning. Uh, the, well, the next thing on my schedule 
was to go to the installation mass of Archbishop Shelton Fogg, uh, <laughs> right, right nearby. Um, wow. Uh, another, Who was our, our very our first, first black guest. Archbishop, yeah. our, our first guest on the podcast, um, and who is in charge of the diaconate. So a lot of people think the deacons report to the priests. They do only in that the bishop has delegated that to the priest. Hmm. The diaconate is actually the arm of the bishop. Wow. And um, so I, that connected in my mind. And, uh, and, and I was like, okay, I'd, I'd better at least look into this. Well, they do deacon formation every six years, and this year it's starting. And, uh, and my buddy, I, I was asking him about it, and uh, he said, well, I'm actually considering this too. Uh, I was going to meet with Deacon Scott Hedges. Uh, would you want to join me in that? And I was like, yeah, awesome. And, uh, and so he reached out to Deacon Scott, and Deacon Scott's assistant scheduled the meeting on the feast of the Saint of Saint Catherine of Siena, <laughs> and, um, wow! And uh, and so anyway, it's gone from there. And there's been ups and downs. And I told Lisa like I think like the timing might be now. And she was like, No way! We have four little kids. The timing is not now. And again, we've been you know all over the map from like okay, we're not doing it. Okay, we're considering it right now. It's just a cautious. So what was light, what was one her moment? That made her feel that call too, because I know that when there's the, that call, it's the call of the couple in many ways to discernment on some right. level. Right. Yeah. So yeah, the call to ordination is of course the call to the to the man, but um, but the the wife, uh, her role is that she has to write a letter to the archbishop consenting to ordination. Uh, so that will be what what Lisa discerns over these next you know five six years. So it doesn't. It, you know, it's not, it's just like going to seminary, right? Like when I tell little, or not little kids, when I tell young men in youth ministry, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Like, Hey, you should think about, you know, going to seminary. You, you discern going to seminary. You don't discern, I'm going to be a priest. So I'm going to go to seminary. You discern God is calling me to seminary. And then at seminary is where you discern your call to the priesthood. Right. And, um, it so, reminds me of the Ethiopian, uh, child deacons. <laughs> I, I haven't remembered him. I, like you've told me about that before I hadn't thought about it yeah. until just now but um, but in any case go on sorry yeah, well that's that's basically it so I think Lisa is still in that yellow light I mean she's she's praying through it and and so am I because we have little kids and and all this stuff I say all that to say that um that has made me prayerfully go through my obligations of which there are many many groups I've started many um many projects have started and think about, okay, what, what can I do? What can only I do? What can other people do? And since we were the least important. <laughs> That's exactly right. No. <laughs> right. Uh, what do I think God is calling me to continue? What do I think God might be calling me to step down from? Obviously husband and father are two roles that I cannot step down from and that no one else can. Can and that hopefully you don't want to. Uh, right. No, right. No, I don't. Right. Uh, and then, uh, and then there were there was an uh, other ones. Spirit Inspire was something on my list of things I wanted to do, but I wasn't as sure that God wanted me to keep doing. And and I also felt that I had made my contribution in the sense of getting all this equipment that no one can see up and running. And um, like you know, I was the sort of the technological driving force. Um, but now I think the, the gears are in motion and the locomotive's going and now it's just kind of throwing more coal on the fire and, and that sort of thing. And I felt I was leaving this in very capable hands. Um, and so I, I discerned that God was calling me to step down, which is, you know, is probably top five toughest discernments. <laughs> like, you know, like there's some, uh, you know, really weighty ones in terms of marriage and things, but of where my passions are and what I love and the friends that I have here, um, it was a it was a battle of months. Well, dude, you did announce it to us on the feast of Halloween, <laughs> so there was something oh, to that. It was a scary announcement. Well, 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 it, it goes to that that battle that you had, that dream <laughs> that you had, that battle that Satan was having with God over your soul. And there's there there's truth to this reality of you know I think speaking truth and sharing the gospel and this desire to help others experience conversion. That I mean that's the whole point of why we do Spirit Inspire this desire to facilitate encounter. Yeah. But you are called to a, a different way of doing that, 
perhaps. You know, I'm not going to say you are called to be a deacon because it is a discernment. Right. Uh, and, you know, I've asked priests, when did you know you were going to be a priest? He said, the moment the bishop laid his hands on right. my head. Exactly. Like, okay. And that's what they tell you. Like, you can even go into formation. You can bail at any time. Like, until that, yeah. until right. those hands are on your head. Right, but, but that ministry is so, so beautiful. And for today, to be the Feast of St. Stephen when we're releasing this episode, when we're sharing this news, uh, I mean, he was the first deacon, right? Yes. <laughs> and it's my little brother's name. Oh, that's <laughs> so beautiful. I yeah. love that. He was also the first martyr, but we'll, we'll hope that doesn't <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I was just... If it does, let the lions grind my bones. Oh, my. <laughs> I was just... He uh, said it here for <laughs> folks. <laughs> I was that's just, Irenaeus, I think. Oh, right. Ignatius. I, pre Ignatius. I, I prefer um, uh, Lawrence. Uh, I'm, Turn I'm me done, over. I'm done. Turn me over. I'm done yeah. on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Great deacons, but to go back to my patron saint, Francis of Assisi was ordained a deacon and never felt worthy of taking the next uh, level of holy orders. And so St. Francis of Assisi remained a deacon until his death. Like really? A lot of people don't, I, I did not know that. Know a that. lot of people don't realize that he was not a priest right. because almost every major founder of an order like that was a yeah. priest if they were male. That is and huge. And he was, he was not. A um, couple it, things. In were, some of his writings, though, something will be going on. And he's like, let us find a good priest to celebrate <laughs> mass. Like, <laughs> they don't even have a priest around. <laughs> and I didn't know that, like, when... This whole thing started. That's something I found out on the way. Like someone was like, well, you, you know, Francis was a deacon. I was like, no, I didn't know that. You grow up with St. Francis being like one of the most famous, popular saints in the church. And I've never heard that. Well, well, I, had I, I knew that. And yet every day. I think you're the one who told me it. Every day, like they get, like when you just said it again, it shocked me. Yeah. Like, or even though I, I, re I, I did intellectually know that, but I don't think of it often. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Isaac. Oh, you're, you're fine. Um, uh, just a couple of thoughts are going through my head. One, you mentioned a moment ago, helping out with the equipment, um, with the technological side. And I would just say to everyone who watches and who listens to Spirit Inspire, uh, there's been a lot more than that that you, that you have done. Yes. Um, you know, I don't know if any of us, you know, four guys feel really comfortable giving like emotional thank yous and that kind of stuff. It's not really a dude thing, but I want to say thank you. I, I don't think that anybody is probably aware of how integral you have been to this. Um, and what a, what integral part of, of making this happen from the beginning. And the other thing that was, well, and, and when you say leaving it in capable hands, I'm not sure about that at all. But, um, yeah. Well, luckily I am. At least yeah. there's hands. I was there's the one as long, as, long yeah. as, <laughs> as, as long as this means leaving them in God's hands. There's yeah, that's there capable. Oh, look yeah. at that. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the other, the other thought that was going through my mind was, you know, when you first brought this up to us that you were going to be leaving by the end of the year, and... You know, many, many thoughts, many feelings go through one's mind, you know, obviously ranging from, wow, what are we going to do next? Or, you know, we're really going to miss this guy? Or, you know, do you hate us that much? I mean, you know, it, could be, it could be any of those things. Of course. No, just kidding. But... Uh, there's a temptation to it. There, there you is. immediately rejected it. There but, is, but yeah. no, there's like, oh, you know, is there something Brian's not happy with? Is, you know, you think all those things, but mainly what you think it's of John. is we are going... It was me. Yeah, it is John. It definitely is John. <laughs> but mainly what you think of is this simply, this is a friend, yeah. a dear friend, a brother in Christ, somebody who's been an integral part of the show... And we're gonna miss you. We're gonna miss that. Not that we're not gonna be friends. Yeah, we, but we will. But we're people gonna don't miss realize this. that, like, like this, to to the public, this sort of just appeared out of nowhere. This has been a but year we and literally, a half now. we literally met every single Monday for an entire year yeah. in your restaurant. Yeah. Talking multiple hours. Yeah. Every week about. You know what's this going to look like? What equipment? Are and we that buying? was how I got to in? know you guys. Some of you yeah. all had known each other first, but. Isaac, we had never even met or yeah. heard of each other until God <laughs> called us together yeah. for this. Yeah, this was the first time I had met any of the three of you. And I that's a, that's a big part of our lives. So yes, we're going to continue to be friends, but the other part people may not realize is we pretty much only have the time to see each other on Monday when we're mm -hmm. doing this show. Yeah. And so the other thought that was going through my mind that I'm trying to get at with this is, 
I think this is true in anything in life where there is life, where there is growth, where there is friendship. I think about it now that my children are getting older. I've got one that's about to be a teenager, you know, and she talks about getting married and things like this, you know, and you know, no parent ever wants to hear that, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's a common human phenomenon that when we care about somebody, we want to keep them. Yes. Right? Yes. And one half of that is perfectly fine. That's just human emotion. That's love. That's caring. That's liking somebody. The other half of it is utterly selfish. Mm. Right? Because at the end of the day, if we really care about somebody and we're here not only caring about other people, this is a faith-based podcast. We're, you know, if we're going to walk walk the talk we're talking, we're saying that what matters more than anything is that God's will be done. Amen. Yeah. And so if that means that God has said to you in your discernment, Brian, you need to step away from this and focus on something else. Well, that can only mean that that is because God's going to be using you in some way that he knows to accomplish his will. That's the hope. And even though that may be a little hard for us to accept, you know, who on earth are we to stand in the way of that? So even though this is all a little bit emotional, uh, especially these last couple of weeks, all I can say is the reality is um, I'm on a personal level, I'm, I'm not happy you're leaving. But I'm really happy that God's got great plans for you. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Too. That was beautiful. I couldn't have said anything better myself. Yeah. The only ad addition I would make, because I always have to, is that, uh, <laughs> is that, which is why I'm leaving, uh, so the podcast can end on time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's really why. <laughs> um, is that, uh, you know, that desire is only, that, that desire to, to keep, to be with, like, yes, there's a selfish aspect of that, but it also points to the communion of saints. It does. That, that one day we will have all the time in the world. Yes. Never be, let all the time go beyond yet. the world. Yeah. Uh, to play heavenly baseball, I'll be on the Franciscan team, which who are definitely worse than the Dominicans. I will be on the Dominican um, but, uh, team. <laughs> uh, okay. I think we could take them. If we're, I'm on the Franciscan, Maximilian Colby's my confirmation team, right. so yeah. we can do it. Okay. I played well, baseball. I have John yeah. Soul. That's right. Yeah. Well, you'll have me for the rest of your life, so I'm yeah. not well, going anywhere, and, and God willing. And I, I'm... That'll be your penitence. <laughs> that's right, right. I serve as your penance. No, but I, I'm just thankful for you, Brian, uh, just coming into my life in general because, you know, I met you little over five years ago when you first moved here and we just had a lot of good uh experiences together mm -hmm. you know it's really been a, a pretty incredible adventure uh since we've kind of come into each other's lives and i, I thank you because you've introduced me to so many guys that have lived here their whole lives and i've always longed for good solid uh brothers in christ and it was through you that i've met all of these men and i thank you for that and obviously god is the ultimate instrument in this but uh but as you said you know there is there's only so much so much time we can give during this earthly life that if we can trust that it's all about getting to heaven where there is no time, there is no schedule, there is no limitations. Then we can't lose at baseball. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right? And there is no ninth inning. I, I am uh, I'm greatly privileged to uh, be your friend, and uh, I, uh, I look forward to seeing what God has in store for you. Amen. Yeah. To, to add some levity here at the end, uh, to think um, that Lisa has all that power wielded in that letter, I can't. Yeah. Oh, it's so I it's can't, a horrific I can't, way. I can't it's keep my mind off of it. So you're, <laughs> so you're going from this to, hey Brian, will you unload the dishes? If you don't, I won't write this letter. Like, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Dude, that's so it, funny. it is. Uh, there's definitely. Uh, that's well, so funny because I thought you meant when I told her I was going to be the best husband ever. Like that's that's the, the like the well, self imposed cross I care. Well, now she has. She's like, wait, you said you were gonna be the best husband ever. You need to unload the dish. But now you're right. Like, no, I no. didn't even think about that. No, part. no. Now she really yeah. has the leverage to make you the best husband <laughs> ever, or else. Well, in my view, if she doesn't write the letter, it's not God's will. Sure. So, sure. Uh, and then you're back on spirit inspired. <laughs> that's right. But I still, 
still have that original promise weighing on me. Yes. Yeah, and I think I know, that we it's, can it's say, um, you know, for all of our uh, viewers, I was going to say for all of our thousands of diehard fans, but we haven't gotten we haven't gotten that yet. We're losing um, our fan favorite Brian Kane today. I know. Yeah, all those <laughs> five hundred views on, on Brian's uh, conversion story here. Brian is watching it again. <laughs> yeah, that's all no. it does. Showing but, other people. <laughs> yeah, guys, check it out. Well, I have to say, like, it's because they're trying to keep it humble. Back from but time to time. the person yeah. I hear the most about is Isaac Fox yeah. when people are talking to me about who they like to listen to. It's very so, true. I hear that a lot um, as well, Isaac. You're but, not talking uh, about maybe the I can address. The audience in the final segment, just to say goodbye. Yes. But I do want to give my wife a shout out because she is uh, just like you know, she's pretty awesome. She's pretty awesome, <laughs> and uh, and and I wouldn't be here without her, and I wouldn't be on this podcast without her. Yes, to you know, me being late for dinner some days and things like that. So um, yeah, it truly awesome. is a it truly is a gift. You know, technically, I think all of us should give a shout out to our wives for yeah. precisely that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're all four married. Um, you know, it three is of us have children. Our wives have sacrifice. to. It is a sacrifice uh, for them. Um, I bet Lisa would uh, do an interview on this podcast, and I bet be it cool. would be even more interesting. Yeah. than my story. It probably. We want to make right. sure it's when you're no longer here, so we can ask questions exactly. about you. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Also, people might think you're crazy for trying to become a deacon this early with four kids and to get yeah. her perspective on that would be pretty powerful but we've already heard brian's story the crazy is already kind of assumed <laughs> yeah i texted a, a priest. she must be crazy to go along with it too right i texted a priest that i was discerning it and he replied well that's a steep hill to climb <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> oh man and, uh, thanks for the support father so, yeah <laughs> right so on to steep hills that's right there's a cross at the top. Well, praise God. And uh, I guess we'll uh, pause there for our final segment uh, coming up here after this. Hey, everyone. Here at Spirit Inspire, we want to serve our community by highlighting God's work in our parishes, schools, and apostolates. We hope to bring renewal and unity between all those in the body of Christ. If you would like a shout out in the next episode of Spirit Inspire, go to spiritinspire.com or email us at spiritinspire at gmail.com. Thanks and God bless. All right, everybody, welcome back to Spirit Inspire. I'm your host, John Soul, and we have been talking with Brian Kane uh, about his uh, incredible conversion, testimony, and his departure from Spirit Inspire. And uh, it's our final segment together, and we figured we'd give Brian a chance to, you know, say his goodbye directly to you all who have been such faithful viewers with us. So, all right. Well, thank you all for lis uh, listening, for watching. Um, it's it's been an, a beautiful journey. Um, if you cut to the wide shot, Isaac, I also want to thank you guys um, as my co-hosts. Um, yeah, like you said, it's been uh, just an epic journey um, of fraternity and ups and downs and, uh, you know, battles, uh, amazing providence. I mean, you know, we, we haven't told the story of the show yet. And maybe uh, if you want, I'll come back for that episode. You but, better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean, it involves like the, the bells ringing for divine mercy while we're in the bell tower of the 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 spire and like so the memories are incredible um i don't think there's really any uh podcast like this as far as i can tell in the country as far as like a really locally focused uh panel and interview show um you know, on a catholic level um and so i think we've started something really special here i feel uh, blessed to be a part of it i really do think that god's been with us the whole time and, and leading and guiding us and he will continue to do so and and to all the listeners we do this for you um especially if uh you know if you're still uh trying to figure out if catholicism's right for you or um you know you're you're going deeper into the church just a word of encouragement um to keep going and to, to keep fighting god loves you so much um, and he has this amazing plan for you that uh, that you can't even imagine. Um, he loves you and wants the best for you way, way more than anyone that else you know. And uh, and the plan that he has for your life, if you say yes, is absolutely incredible. And and again, um, you know, if if you need a sign, if you need it, ask for it. But if you're if you've got enough faith to keep going, keep going. And and if my story can be, help be a sign. Uh, to you, um, then then let it be so, uh, or I pray that that uh, God would let it be so. So, thank you guys. It's been absolutely awesome. 
It truly thank has. You, Brian. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Happy Feast of Stephen. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And Merry Christmas, everyone. It's <laughs> yeah. a great gift. So. Merry Christmas. We're in the octave. That's right. Real right. Catholics celebrate for eight days of solemnity. And the and 12 days are afterwards. All the way to my birthday of Candle, Candlemas. Wait, eight days leading up eight to Christmas? Days, no, eight days of solemnity after. And then the and then Christmas days season after that. keeps going. Ah, that'll be, that, that could be a whole episode. There's, there's actually debate about when the Christmas season ends. I like to choose Candlemas because I'm uh, born on Candlemas. Oh. Uh, oh <laughs> so, I like to choose the Can, Feast of right. St. Blaise. <laughs> hey, it's the Feast of St. Blaise with the candles is the day after Candlemas. Never thought wow! Really yeah, I didn't that. yeah, yeah. Just now, I, I, was, <laughs> I was just trying to make a joke. Yeah. This is real spirit inspired. <laughs> wow! Well, well and the candles once they're lit are blazing, so that makes sense. Oh my gosh! God's you know, doing signs and wonders. The, 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 the Catholic fun facts are so signs much cooler punders, than these am I right? random signs and punters. Uh, <laughs> Catholic All right, fun facts. Okay. I'm done. Yeah, I'm get done. Us, with get us out of here. God bless Everybody. you, Everybody. <laughs> All right, cut to me, Isaac. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone, it has been a fun uh, final episode with Brian Kane, and uh, it has been a great gift to have him here. It's been a gift to have you all uh, here. You can, of course, uh, share this video, subscribe, like, everything that we need to make the algorithm, share the gospel throughout the world, and uh, we will continue to be praying for you all, and we just ask you to pray for us into this next chapter in Spirit Inspire for the good of our beloved uh, Cathedral of the Assumption and the Archdiocese of Louisville. So God bless you all and uh, see you next time. King Wenceslas went out on, on the, the feast of Stephen. Winter when snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. The frost was cruel. And came inside, gathering winter fuel. Merry Christmas, everybody. God bless you.